Chris. I'm Deborah Castillero. I'm the founder and CEO of the Bilingual Children's Enterprises. My company is a mobile and on-demand platform, language platform, to help little kids learn a second language through apps, web-based resources, and video content. I want to start off by sharing a little bit about my background. Um, I was the innovator at Sony Music. There was a Latina in the mix there that came up with their Latin crossover strategy. That was me. And while it sounds extremely glamorous that I had the opportunity to launch all of these artists, the truth of the matter is it was a $900 million strategy for Sony. Because my expertise is in multicultural marketing and development. I later went on to work with movie studios and a lot of A-list celebrities. And then I found myself working for public television in Spanish. And I worked on a white paper that really spoke to me. And what I learned in this white paper is that English language learners are growing seven times faster than the general student population. We also know that by 2025, 25% of all students in the United States will be an English language or dual language learner. So the problem with this dynamic is statistically, we know that 40% of these kids will not graduate from high school. We also know that 50% of Hispanic kids, only 50% go to preschool. So they are starting their academic experience in what we call the word gap. And if you're not familiar with it, I encourage you to look <coughs> up the 30 million word gap. So our solution is focused on early learners, two to six. Why? Because early learners, little kids have a greater propensity to acquire a second language than do adults. Dual language pedagogy has been scientifically proven to accelerate second language acquisition. And mobile is the way to go with Hispanics because we're super mobile consumers. Additionally, we're introducing a multicultural IP, Tippy Tom, to match today's multicultural audience. So just three days ago, I launched my second app. I have an MVP in the marketplace uh, called Care Bears and Amigos in New York City. And so you'll see in this video what is our unique value Welcome to Care Bears and Amigos in New York City. Amigos means friends in Spanish. In this app, children can learn more than 1,000 words in English and Spanish. We also know children learn faster when they fully interact with a subject in a fun and playful way. We'll take your kids on a fun-filled adventure to New York City alongside Tippy Tom and the Care Bears. Children will learn about a variety of animals and their differences, about geometric shapes while visiting the Statue of Liberty, and early math concepts while on the subway. Your child will learn their letters and their sounds and something about Latino culture. We also know the importance of helping a young child identify their feelings and the care bears are the best at social and emotional learning. So I hope by now that you figured out that our pedagogy is very sound. We worked on our roadmap for four months with our PhDs to get it right. And you probably have ascertained that our flagship partnership is with American Greetings and the Care Bears. Our other partners include Facebook. We are one of their 100 global partners for their free basics platform. We just signed a contractual agreement with Samsung and Verizon Kids through Fingerprint Play, who curates all of their content. And Curio is a tablet company for kids. They have about 250,000 units in the marketplace, and they will push out notifications and preload our app onto their devices. Our promotional partners are JetBlue and the Los Angeles Public Library. And looking at our revenue model, this year we launched the English-Spanish version. We are really focused on B to C initially with a one-time license at $4.99. And with funding or, and or revenue, we will then take our existing model and replicate it into English and Mandarin. And that's the beauty of this model because we're going to do English and Portuguese. We will also, also build out a child dashboard so that we can um, evaluate their language metric as they grow, go through the app. And then we'll really focus on teachers and schools and districts and then transition into a monthly subscription. 
Um, because I come from entertainment, I also recognize there's a huge opportunity in what is animated video content for distribution on VOD, like the next, like Netflix and Univision. So as we build affinity for Tippy Tom, uh, we will then enter into the character licensing business, which is a $10.3 billion annual, biz annual business. So we're talking about five streams of uh, revenue, a monthly subscription, distribution licensing fees, royalty fees, publishing fees, and also selling our data. So my team consists of Stella Cruz, who's graciously uh, videotaping for me. He's uh, my new COO. Uh, Alejandra Cuestas and, and uh, Jessica Camacho are part of my marketing team. And yes, all of our last names start with the letter C. Uh, and then Boktoon Labs are serving as our developers and my, you know, acting as our CTO. So in terms of my financials, since I don't have a lot of time to dive into them, what I do want to tell you is we do have full financial projections that reflect our P&L, our user acquisition strategy, our cost per acquisition, our funnel, and retention. So I'm raising a capital C raise of $1 million for product development labor, marketing, and operations. And on that note, I want to tell you that I have bootstrapped most of this for my company. Um, and without, without the support of traditional investors. If I do not get investment soon, I will fail. And I can just tell you that that would be an absolute shame because there's a huge opportunity and there's a huge need to address that. Thank you so much for your attention. relation to the first company that you mentioned? Would be so, yeah, so my corporate name is Bilingual Children's Enterprises. My IP, is, is trademark, is Tippy Tom. And so Tippy Tom are the two characters that you see here that are, this is Tippy, she speaks Spanish and she's learning English. This is Tom and he's bilingual and I have a series of nine multicultural characters. So in the app, which there's a tablet circulating, um, all of them are present in the app, including the grandparents. So you've got Abuela Fina, Abuelo Pancho, Tippi, and Tom. You have a dark-skinned Latino, his name is Chico. You have a little indigenous girl, her name is Cha Cha Cha. And, and then Pete, which is the Chihuahua, and um, Koki the Frog over the Vico. By the way, Dora the Explorer does one billion in sales every year to give you a perspective on what is the preschool character licensing space. And Nickelodeon made a big mistake. They took Dora and they turned her into a teenager and they are losing market share. So I think that there's a real opening for someone to come in with an authentic, linguistically irrelevant um, characters to fill that whole marketplace. Yes. Give us an idea of what kind of what type of responses that you receive from some customer voices. Well, if, you know, we've got about I think I have to have a check today because imagine I launched on Sunday and then I had to prepare for this. But from what I can see, we have like a hundred downloads so far. We generate about uh, seventy-five million impressions through the campaign that um, American Greetings is doing. So they're offering about a hundred thousand dollars worth of in-kind marketing. But from my user testing experience, I mean, the kids I've sat with kids, three-year-olds who are either Spanish language dominant or English language dominant, or living in a bilingual household. And they are actively engaged. They will spend 45 minutes in the app. Now, I want to tell you something that was a real, a really interesting insight. I have, um, I went and visited my family recently, and I have um, my aunt Lily and uncle Carlos. I don't even know if they graduated from high school. They are Spanish language dominant, and they are in their 80s. I, my uncle asked me, "What are you working on these days?" And so I showed him the app for 45 minutes. 
these 80 year olds were heavily engaged in this app and I thought that was an incredibly interesting insight because here we are, they're learning how to drag and drop, but we're also working on their cognitive ability and the preschool app was like perfect for them. So I think that there's a multi-generational opportunity for parents and kids to be engaged in, in what is a, a high quality educational experience along with um, extended family. One thing back on that, how well this or did you look at this and if you help parents who are uh, not English speaking, help their children who are bilingual in the school system? Yeah, so we can do that this yeah, I mean, it's a goal of ours. I really need to hire someone to focus <coughs> exclusively on schools. Okay. They are, um, all I've heard from the education community, and this is documented by the New Schools Fund, the greatest pain point for schools in 2017 is this high influx of English language learners and them not having adequate resources to address the problem because only 11% of teachers actually speak a second language. So there's a huge opportunity, but you know, it's a, it's a process dealing with schools. So I'm hoping a pilot um, in, in, right in no, Norwalk, Connecticut, a program so that we can build a story from there. Yes. So trying to come back to Core Valley, you, you talked about having uh, folks work on the curriculum, the kind of learning, the design, um, but then